Ladies and gentlemen, welcome home. Or at least this is kind of what feels like my second home. Grilling, grilling, grilling. <laughs> Can always appreciate somebody with a good truck taste. Woo! Well, boys, about two years later, and I don't know, about twenty to 25,000 miles, it looks like the litters are getting kind of low here. We're probably at 40%, so we might be looking at getting the old 15, a new set of rubbers here soon. Oh, it's going to be a minute. <laughs> I am a YouTuber, yes, as a matter of fact. And we're off. You guys see this 2007 5.9? One of you is gonna be taking it home here very, very shortly. If you guys haven't gotten your entries for a chance to win this truck, click the link in the description below, grab yourself anything on the site and your entries get automatically submitted. This is a 2007 5.9 Cummins. It's got 22 by 14 American Force, Evo SS8, Nitto 355 Trail Grapplers, a built transmission, and best of all, an S464 Turbo and a second gen Steed Speed Manifold and all this awesome, awesome performance stuff that, well, one of you guys is gonna be taking home for the cost of either a hat or a shirt or or a banner. If you haven't gotten your entries and you're considering do so, I definitely would. Drew and Austin, our previous winners, decided to pull the trigger and well, they ended up taking home two very nice trucks. Also guys, I wanna thank you all for your overwhelming support of the limited RWB Surfer shirt that I'm wearing right now. They are at this current point all sold out. So to everybody that did end up grabbing one, kudos to you guys. You guys, you guys are opportunists out in the audience. They will be all shipping here very, very soon. But yes, anyway guys, I was here hanging out in the shop for a little while today. We just washed up the Cummins, it looks so clean right now. I have had it scooting around and for those asking, that S464 on the stock fuel of this truck runs phenomenally well. It's not overwhelmingly laggy. It's actually very usable and boy, does it pull so well. It's actually very impressive. I am absolutely in love with it and I will definitely be sad when the day comes that it's gonna have to leave our possession because I am, I am definitely enjoying it. But guys, anyway, that's not what we're doing in today's video. Today's video is actually very exciting. We're gonna be heading out to a local dealership that I have been in talks with now for the past few months about what's coming to the channel. And that's exactly what this title's about. The 2020 Denali Duramax that we have ordered. There's a lot of details that we're gonna have to go over as, well, this is quite a process, but I'm learning as we go. And well, this is actually the first time I've ever ordered a vehicle brandy spanking new. And there are some things associated with it. Plus there's kind of a process. Figured that we could talk about it. And today we were gonna go over a few details of the truck. So I'm gonna wrap a few things up here at the shop and then we're gonna get on the road. All right guys, so we got about an hour and a half drive. get to cruising. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a never before seen destination on the vlog. We are at Star Buick GMC out here in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. It took me about an hour and a half to get here. It wasn't all that bad. Saw a few state troopers, but luckily the wide wheels didn't do us in today. So guys, the craziest part about all this is in just a few short months, my Denali is gonna be right in this parking lot somewhere in this vicinity. It could be maybe right there. I'm not really quite sure yet but it's very exciting. So I've been in touch with an individual by the name of Seamus Power here for the last few months, talking about, of course, the allocation of the Denali. And it's been a super exciting process. Well, because I got the first allocation for the 2020 Denali Duramax from this dealership. They move a lot of fleet accounts, so they get early allocation. And I wanted to secure one of those, not only to get a truck quick, but to bring you guys brand new 10 speed Allison Duramax L5P content as quick as I possibly can. It's kind of an exciting feeling right now walking around, although they don't have any of the new HDs here yet, really nobody does. They're gonna be here and they're gonna be here soon. So I'm gonna head in, I'm gonna introduce myself to Seamus and well, we're gonna look around for a little while. I actually haven't even had the opportunity to sit in, let's just say the light duty version. So maybe we'll check one of those out here as well. It's kind of getting real. Hey, right? sure. how are you? What's going on? Nice to meet you finally. Yeah, that's the rig, man. That's awesome. That's like my best buddy. That thing's, uh, it's kind of like my cell phone. We never really go anywhere without it. Is it like a water or a soda or anything? I'm like okay, that? thank you though. I appreciate it. One thing I might have you do though, could you print out that spec sheet that you emailed me? I went to do it, but my, my ink is shot. You can actually have the original. Awesome, thank you. Let's 
CWP tentative production week? Uh, target production. Target production week. Which, in all fairness, is, might as well be interchangeable. When they give that to us, I don't know about new model lines, but they are usually that week that vehicle should be built. Really? Dude, so that would be amazing. Be. That would be, because that's a lot faster than we were told things are going to Yeah, but you, you set that six to eight week expectation just to set kind of the no, maximum that's, time. No, no. Six to eight weeks is the norm, especially on new products. You're so, getting one of, it's got to be one of the first four trucks we ordered. Um, really? Yeah. Great. Do you really think that realistically, like maybe we could see this thing in July? I do. That would be so I, sick. Are there any indications where we can get an update ahead of time? I mean, as it, once as it, it produces, sign? yeah, once it gets past this code. So I just printed this today. This, this was today. This was as a, yeah, man. Oh, I check shoot, on this. Dude, I thanks. check on this like every three days. Hey, thank for you. you. I appreciate yeah, that. I, I'm a. I'm excited to see this. Yeah. yeah. All right, brother. Take care. Safe travels, man. It was good meeting you. All right, dude. Sounds good. Cool guys. So I just met the sales guy that I've been dealing with for a long time. He's been a super, super great dude to deal with. Very level-headed, and honestly, there are a lot of people that handle business really the only way. And that's just being a level-headed person, being respectable to the individual, being respectable to the customer, and looking out for their best interests. And honestly, that's why I ended up going with this dealership here. It's kind of hard to find that because sometimes they just want the sale. Now, I have my spec sheet of my 2020 Denali HD right here. And we will be going over all the information and RPO codes on this, as well as some of the anticipated dates associated with the build and the delivery process. Now, as you guys heard from our conversation, it actually seems like this truck, maybe, just, just maybe, obviously it's all tentative, speculative, but it just may be actually arriving sooner than what we are anticipating. The build date is 7-1, but at times the truck is already completed by said date. So we might get the truck in July, whereas I've been communicating like mid to late August, because generally there's like a six to eight week lead time associated with the tentative production date and well, the arrival of the vehicle. So that's very, very good news. We'll get to this in a minute. So these are 1500s here behind me. Now that you guys know we're going Denali, I wanted to take a minute to look at both the AT4 and the Denali 1500 versions because well to be honest with you guys i've actually never seen these trucks in person all the interaction i've had at this point has been online so we have the keys to this black at4 edition which is a super nice truck obviously the aesthetic stylings and cues of the 1500 versus the 2500 are very similar it's just when you upgrade to the hd versions well everything's just a little bit bigger and beefier obviously the controversial topic of conversation is the mirror placement on these trucks i get that but dudes i am super motivated to make that look good you can see on this truck right here here, actually the little plastic cap where the uh let's just say old area for the mirrors is actually paint matched whereas on the denali it's not it's actually kind of black and i think that that's probably how the hd denali is going to be the at4 edition gets uh, like an all black interior with these nice little brown inserts these sewed in little inseams which looks really nice i do like that a lot now interior wise i'd say that this truck is actually um it's similar yet different if that makes any sense it's not like it's identical but there are a lot of similar styling cues. It's cool that it finally has a push button start, which my LML does not have. So finally, we can leave the key in the pocket and just get in and go. Now, obviously the gauge cluster is way different. It's actually pretty nice. I do like it. It's clean. It's minimalistic. That's kind of what I look for in really anything. All the controls over here are the same. They've just been kind of changed up a little bit. Everything feels good. Everything clicks very nice. You know it's on, you know it's off. I do like that. Controls over here are the same. Buttons are very similar. The lock unlock switch pretty much in the same position, just changed up a little bit. The center console is definitely different. It sits up higher. Now, finally, we have this consistency between where your elbow is on the door sill versus where it sits on the center console, which is kind of nice because usually it's like a little lopsided and uh, a little weird. Now, it does look like it's starting to rain, so we might be running out of time here a little bit, but overall, super nice and does seem a little bit more spacious. I think my LML, comparing this to my LML, it actually seems like this cab has opened up a little bit more, which I'm okay with. I never really complained about the inside of my LML, but it did feel a little bit more confined. Whereas when I sat in like Grandpa Smurf, an older truck, or even some of the newer Power Strokes, I just feel like way more spacious. There's a lot more room for activities. Now the centralized gauge cluster is all nice and good. We've got the heated seats that'll be coming in my truck as well. The one thing that's kind of interesting though, on at least these trucks and even the new HDs is this infotainment area. You would anticipate that this would be bigger. Dodge has this massive like iPad like screen and the Fords even have a bigger area here too. I think if anything, that's a little bit disappointing. Pointing. And again, just my personal opinion. Now sitting here and kind of feeling out this new mirror position is kind of interesting because they said that they moved it due to blind spot reduction. Now 
obviously the mirror sits down a little bit, so you kind of feel like you have to shrink down to look through it, which is kind of bizarre, but I feel like I'm gonna get used to it. I don't wanna be one of those people to say I hate it right away. I'm not gonna say that I'm necessarily the, the biggest fan of the kind of like broken arm mirror, as some people are calling it, but I look at it like a challenge. We're just gonna have to make it look good. Now on the back here too, we finally have heated seats in the rear. The Denali pickups did not come with that for a while. And honestly, I mean, granted we're in a 1500, but it's hella spacious back here. I mean, there's a lot of room for activities. Super comfortable. And well, we have these like little in seat storage areas here, which are kind of cool because anybody that owns a pickup knows that sometimes the in cab cargo can be somewhat of a challenge if you have passengers and all of that. So that's cool. Now, the one thing that I did want to point out real quick is this. We're going to pull this up real quick. Check out this with the tailgate. We have this like multi-pro tailgate on here. So you can click this button. It'll drop down. All is nice and good. And then you've got this other dual purpose functionality where you can kind of drop the front and then you can kind of let's see here this is my first time ever playing with one of these things pop that up just like that and then if you want to drop it down completely you can so boom now what about this if we have a trailer hitch in and we drop the second phase of this tailgate what happens then if a trailer hitch was in there this really wouldn't be so good i don't know if that was really all that well thought out in my personal opinion the trailer hitch would literally smash that right there. And well, the owner really wouldn't be having all that good of a time. How dare you do Am I in frame? Probably like kind of, am I kind of clear of the truck? So if I stand like this, am I, am I hundred percent in frame? Yeah. Something like that. That's how you do YouTube thumbnails. It's kind of an awkward process, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So you just record it and then you just do that. And then I just record it and I do a whole bunch of stuff like this. Oh. And then you screen grab it, right? And then everything's good. Um, like that. Hopefully that should suffice. Thank you, man. No problem. I appreciate it. How dare you do so yeah, I think the AT4 is very nice, but to my OGs, I have said multiple times that I've always wanted a Denali. Actually, before I picked up my 2015 LML, which is sitting right over there, I had a Denali on order. But one caveat, it was actually a 6.2 liter gasser. I had bought the gasser because my parents actually told me to get a gasser because it was more affordable and I didn't need a diesel. Looking back a few years later, I am so happy that I didn't listen. Not saying not to listen to your parents because it's probably wise to listen to their advice, but when you get older and you have your own money and you can start to make your own decisions, I'd advise that you do what you want to do because you need to act on the interest of your dollars that you work for. Just, just my two cents. So anyway, now we're looking at a 1500 Denali. And well, I mean, it's just that classic Denali trim it makes me super, super happy. You guys can see real quick between the Denali and the AT4, the AT4 is already kind of all color matched and it comes with a little bit of a different grill. The Denali has its chrome accents because chrome is supposed to be like bougie or luxury or whatever the case is. On my Denali, we're going to get it and we're going to get rid of the chrome, but I want that Denali grill in my opinion it's just bold and it stands out i like it a lot now other exterior styling cues really aren't all that much different they do come with different wheels and guys this is the one thing that i'm kind of surprised about with the hd well these come with these kind of as i would say retractable steps they're retractable not like the amp style but they kind of swivel out and then pivot back in you'll see here in a minute Thank you. Which is super nice. I like that a lot. And then jumping on into the inside of the truck, I wouldn't say that anything is really all that different. It has some like fake wood grain right here and some, I don't know, this is actually, maybe it's not wood grain. It's kind of more like aluminum. And then like this like trim piece right here, it's got this backup camera in the mirror, which is actually kind of nice. I like that a little bit, but the gauges aren't any different. You just have Denali on the steering wheel. And then of course, this is an all blacked out interior. It's got the sunroof and the power sliding rear window. But other than that, the Denali and the AT4 are really kind of the two premium trims and the insides don't really differ all that much. Now on the outside, we have the OLEDs in the rear, which the new HDs will have. I mean, everything is very similar, which I'm super excited about because I mean, at this point in time, my 2015, it's not really outdated. It's still a late model truck, but some of the new technologies, it just doesn't possess. And the reason that I ended up going GMC over the new Silverado is because I had actually always really kind of favored this GMC C that they have on the headlight. I like those headlights a lot. I think they're pretty slick looking in my opinion. But overall, I think that the inside of this thing feels really good. And honestly, I'm I'm very, very excited about getting this new HD truck and just kind of seeing how it feels a little bit different on the inside. Shoot, wrong one. All right. Now guys, that brings us to my Denali HD. This one right here. You know what, it's actually starting to rain a little bit. We should probably get somewhere dry.
All right, so let's talk about my Denali. The first thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is not the fact that I'm twiddling this thing, but model year, 2020. Model, 2500 HD. Sierra Crew Cab Standard Box Four Wheel Drive. That is the base truck. Some other important pieces of information on this are event description 3000, which says it's been accepted by production control. When that event description changes to 3800, that means it has been realized and well, it's materializing. Everything from the suppliers and the manufacturers and all of the logistics are coming together to assemble, well, my truck. So TPW is another essential one that you want. And that's the date. Boom, boom, right there. That's basically, I call it the tentative production week. So 7-1 is kind of that day that we want to look forward to. And up until then, we really don't know what's going on other than the status change, which Seamus is looking at daily. Once that status changes to 3,800, you'll actually have a VIN number in which we can track the progress of the build through. That, my friends, is going to be exciting. And of course, I'm, I'm going to keep you up to date every step of the way. So primary color is... It's the Denali Preferred Equipment Group package. And then, of course, the engine is the L5P, 6.6 liter V8 Duramax Diesel. So let's get into ordered options. These are the things that are associated with the package that I am going after, which is the Denali. So it's kind of off the shelf. You kind of hit Denali and it just goes and it just populates everything. But this is what we get. Power seat adjuster, bucket front seats, keyless open and keyless start. And well, a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not really gonna go into right now, but I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of the other options we added in. Now, of course, this truck has the new 10L1000 Allison 10-speed transmission, which should be kind of interesting. So we've got the remote vehicle starter. We've got the spray and bed liner from the factory. We've got the CMT RPO'd, which is the gooseneck fifth wheel prep package with the camera package. So it's got like a gazillion cameras on it. And I figure now that we have the enthusiast rig gooseneck, we would definitely capitalize on those options. We will be getting them. We do have the rear camera mirror, which is the thing that I just showed you in this truck, which I kind of like. We have the heated and ventilated seats up front and in the back, the driver alert packages. We do have the multi-pro tailgate, which is just standard. I did opt in for a sunroof. Finally, yes, the day has come. A sunroof and a heated steering wheel, which my, oh geez, no, are not options in the 2015 that we drove over here in, which just kills me. Oh, so much. But we will be getting them and the sunroof package will also come with the sliding rear window package, which I'm excited about because opening the sunroof and opening the sliding rear window at the same time is just so nice. Plus, we're going to be doing the cab lights and running lights all around, so we will have full illuminescence, if you will. We do have the bed view camera, the technology package, the integrated trailer brake, obviously. We'll have the hitch guidance package, which will be cool. The LED fog lights and, of course, the LED exterior lighting. It does have the all-nice Bose sound system and all that good stuff. And, well, pretty much everything. We're pretty much getting everything on this truck except for for the infotainment system, which would go right here, which I'm okay with because my current truck has that and I don't, I don't know if I've ever actually used it. Now, I just need to be candid with you guys and that's not at all tailored to this dealership because these guys have been super accommodating, super helpful and I love working with them. But my gripe to General Motors is, why isn't there a bigger screen in these trucks and why are you not offering power retractable steps like your competition? Ram's offering them, Power Stroke, Ford is offering them, but GMC's not. And that tends me to kind of believe that the 2020 will probably have another subsequent I can't get the answer to that on Apple successor to it. Kind of like they did in 2015 where I bought mine in 2015, but then they released a 2015.5 with all these nice little infotainment upgrades and the new mirrors that they came out with and stuff like that. It kind of leads me to believe that GM just wanted to get the core stuff out there, which was like the transmission and the new chassis, but they didn't really want to go into the nitty gritty like the power retractable steps. The def tank is now in the rear. You fill up the DEF fluid now in the same fuel door as you do your fuel. So the def tank's been moved, but it seems like they didn't have time to engineer a proper solution for the HDs now that they don't have the def tank up under the passenger seat. Just my two cents. But that's kind of my one gripe is I wanted a bigger infotainment area and I wanted power retractable steps. And another nice feature GM would have been a double long sunroof, kind of like they do in the power strokes. I think that that's really nice. People that are spending this amount of money on a vehicle, especially a pickup truck, are looking for not only workhorses, but also luxury amenities, things that make them feel very prideful of what they bought. Like I said earlier in this video, we all work very hard for our money and you want to see your money go the furthest way possible. Now I love GM and I've always kind of been dedicated to GM. So I kind of have a feeling of how they work and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a 2020 and a half. But until then, I guess we're just going to have to wait. Oh, that's nice. 
So I know I've been talking about it for a long time and now you guys finally see that it is actually happening and I couldn't be any more excited about it. There's a lot of things that are going through my mind about how we wanna build this truck already, but I gotta kinda calm down because it's a brand new chassis and it's a brand new body, which means that the aftermarket is not going to have things right away. So I'm gonna take possession of this truck while I'm gonna be kinda limited as to what I'll be able to do with it right away due to the fact that parts just aren't going to exist. It's gonna be this kinda crazy rat race where people take these things, start ripping them apart and they start doing all their engineering and analysis to introduce aftermarket parts to the market so people like me and all of you can start to consume them up but modifications are definitely in store and I want to know what you guys want to see you know the direction of what we did with the LML it's been a bulletproof setup in every way shape and form I've run these 14 wads on this truck for two years and it has been amazing before this I had a few turbo setups on this truck it's been on the same lift kit it's gone through multiple iterations and this thing has not given me any reason to gripe or complain whatsoever but next time around I don't really know what I want to do I think I have some things in mind, but I kind of want to know what you guys are thinking. It should be an interesting journey. So that brings us to this truck. And while well, you might be asking yourself, what are you going to do with it? Well, you guys are just going to have to wait and see. So really in just a matter of a few weeks, we're going to be back here and we're going to be taking possession of a new truck. And boy, I couldn't be any more excited about it. I have always wanted to order a brand new vehicle, but I never really had the opportunity or it never ended up working out that way. It was always kind of like when I started looking, I found what I wanted. But in this instance, when I look, there's nothing because we're early. So I guess it was the perfect opportunity. So with that being said, I got about another hour and a half back home. It was an awesome day and it's getting real. So if you haven't already and you're excited about the new Duramax, definitely tap that subscribe button. I'm not, I'm not pressuring you, but if you'd like to tag along, you guys are more than welcome to. It's free, no worries. My light league, I know y'all are out there and I know you're doing what you do best. And lastly, guys, if you haven't gotten your entries for the Cummins, go ahead and do so. Literally, guys, one of you is gonna end up winning a mint third gen 5.9 Cummins for the cost of one of the products that you see on me. What a crazy time we live in. Grateful for the support and I'll see y'all in the next upload.